You actually have to be on cocaine to be on this podcast. It's a great day to be a Wildcat! What's up, everybody? You're listening to yet another edition of Cocaine Willie. I am your commissioner, Bob Trollsby, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, the good chef, Andre Napier, and Fireball Matt Marchesini. Gentlemen, this is our first show of the new year of 2024. How are you doing? And what what did you do this this New Year's? Fascinated to know. Man, I've been working. You know, just been working my little butt off. Working. Uh, been you know these cats have been they've been doing some things to me, boy. They've been doing some things. Twenty twenty four things. I mean, we don't have to talk about them. It's implied, though. Oh my god. Um, well, yeah, let's see after the new year. I mean, other than being violently hung over on New Year's Day, um, oh you know what? It's violent, violently hung over. Like it wasn't great. Um, you know, it's been, uh, it's been enjoyable. Um, I'm taking 2024, a new leaf, uh, turning over a new leaf, as they say, you know, yeah. just happy, enjoying life, love being with my cocaine willy family and listeners and the cats are about to win a national championship in basketball and none of us realize it yet so whoa men's or women's or both oh there we go hey no 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 no, no, no. i it could be one or the other but we just don't know do we claim those women women natties like oh my God, yes no yes. but uh, no but i'm I saying was, like he's claiming wrestling shit from the fucking 30s absolutely we're gonna okay. be like we're gonna be like the barrel the baylor court and we're gonna have those championships showing on the yeah. thing and it doesn't say men or women it's just a trick it's all that matters that we're would be insufferable silly. about it too I would every case I love- who's ever been in your mentions on twitter about not having a natty like i'm going to <laughs> bookmark every like- single one what's up got that natty baby <laughs> yeah. i like being Sufferable. And if it has to if it has to happen for baseball, I don't care. We got a couple good chances this season. So yeah. I mean, I mean, realistically, is this like I mean sports is at an all-time high at K-State? Across no. the board. <laughs> no? Across the board. What are we saying? No. What are you doing, Matt? <laughs> Look, there's no nothing's gonna be nothing's gonna be 2012, 2013. That's a high. Okay, I guess you got two no. conference championships in there, but like three, three. three. Oh, I guess you did the have baseball life. too. Like, I mean, I like K State sports is looking pretty good right now. I mean, football looks pretty good. Basketball is not a dumpster fire right now. Who knows about after? <laughs> Want to know in conference, baby? <laughs> but women's basketball looking great. I mean. Yeah, I get it. Baseball like, top twenty five. Baseball top twenty five. Baseball, baseball yeah. hasn't even played a game yet. It's one person saying, "Oh yeah, I think KC is number twenty in the country." Like, let me fucking do that. <laughs> Claim well, it. Well, I would, I would do that. So eat it. Let's talk some basketball. Let's get the hoop Let's streams. Move. Let's go. Let's, Let's talk some hoops. Let's go. Let's go. So men's hoops, we'll start with them because they are not as good as the women's team, but you know, they're still pretty good squad, pretty good squad. K-State's currently 11 and three overall one and zero in conference play coming off of a victory against the central Florida golden Knights of Orlando. And they are probably going to finish 14th out of 14 teams in the big 12 this season. Well, I don't know. West Virginia might be 14th out of 14 teams in the big 12 and we're playing them tonight. Uh, when this episode drops, you are, you're going to be listening to this on Tuesday. More than likely, you play them tonight at on the road, which is going to be fascinating. But you've got an interesting first two games to open up conference play against two pretty bad teams. Um, but we also we haven't spoken since the final three games of non-conference against Nebraska, Wichita State, and Chicago State. So I guess before we get in too much of the weeds of the Big 12, what were your thoughts on the final three games of non-conference as we turned 
as we headed into conference play because you had a Nebraska game where you lost that one at home, 62 to 46 to uh, the fight in Hoybergs, uh, which I fucking hate that guy. You had a good victory, I would say, against a very average to maybe below average Wichita State squad with a first year head coach, 69 to 60, a win in the T-Mobile Center, and then a third victory against Chicago State, who's like 350 in Ken Palm, is an independent <laughs> basketball team that's already played 20, 20 games, and is, you only won that game by seven points. So very mixed bag. Uh, one good shining moment, I would say, with Wichita State, and then two lackluster games at best uh, between the other two. So just curious your thoughts on those final three non-conference games before conference play started. You're going to have to unmute oh. yourself, Jeff. <laughs> I guess I'll go. <laughs> um, look, yeah, go I ahead, don't, on that. I don't think the UCF uh, – sorry. Nebraska game was not great. I'll start with that. The first half, like, Nebraska was – was playing at a really great level in that game and we still had a lead at halftime and to be able to come through and just have a disaster of a second half really indicated to me that this team is in a position where they are very hot and they're very cold in certain situations nebraska game i think nebraska i will say this nebraska is going to make the ncaa tournament this year i don't think that's a Will they win their first NCAA tournament game ever this year? Though? I don't I don't know about that. But <laughs> I think Nebraska is in a position where they're going to make the NCAA tournament this year. They're a much improved team. And it sucks because it's Nebraska. We a lot of I mean, and you lose at home. I mean, that's that that was bad. Um the Wichita State game was one where I feel like the score doesn't totally match up with how I felt we really played against Wichita State. I think I would have – that game felt like it was a 12- or 14-point victory for us. Um, but Wichita State kind of kept on going on some runs, which which got it into a position where it was somewhat close in certain portions of that game. Um, but obviously getting a win is huge. Chicago State game, yet another clunker. This team is just hot and cold. And – I don't understand how you can play to that level. You can blame the holiday break. You can blame a lot of things, but it just, it was an uninspired effort, even though that team was whatever, 300 and Ken Palm. I don't care. You should not be playing a team like that in that manner, no matter the situation. Um, so just extremely disappointing. The UCF game, I think one one piece of the puzzle really proved a point in that game and if you can get Tyler Perry the opportunity to be taking shots I think that's going to be huge help in this this season um, I'm hoping that this game proved to him that if you have an open shot take it I know chef got into a little bit of an argument with somebody on Twitter about a particular play which I specifically remember and I specifically said the same thing. Why are you giving up the open shot? This team, I don't believe this team's strength is half-court offense. I don't. If we take a shot in the first 10 to 15 seconds of the offense, I think that's our strength. And we just don't do it. It's a position of they slow it down and they try and get a play going. But nobody's a shot creator. It, that, that's just how it feels. Nobody is a shot creator. So I, I struggle with the UCF game because, number one, I don't think UCF is a good team at all. I don't. Um, they, they quite possibly could be the 13th or 14th, as you said, like one of the worst teams in the Big 12. Um, is that a game that gets Tyler Perry turned up a little bit and understanding of his role in this this team may be, but there are going to be games this season where this offense just struggles because they cannot commit to running the half court offense in the way that they need to, to get a shot, a good shot at the end, because they keep giving up open opportunities because it's early in shot clock. I don't get it. So I'm going to say this. 
to go in, you know, in the stretch, you go three and one, you got a game at West Virginia, like winning on the road is tough in the big 12. If you can go on the road to West Virginia, despite the struggles that West Virginia has had this season, if you can go on the road and win that game, I think that is a huge step for this team because they have to prove in big 12 play, you know, Jerome Tang saying, we got to go, we got to get nine wins in big 12 play. Well, you're going to have to steal some games on the road, no matter how crappy a team could be. This is going to be a huge step tomorrow. Or, uh, I guess tonight it's going to be a huge step. I would love for you guys to be able to hear me right now. Yeah. You he, he, you. Okay. Okay. Well, everything you said was right. I, you know, the Tyler Perry thing, it's him passing up open shots. Are we sacrificing just, you know, let him shoot at all costs rather than, you know, passing up a good look? It's There's a balance to it because Tyler was shooting incredible right there. I mean, he, he was shooting impeccable, six for 11. That that's a good showing, but I still think that you have to you still have to run the offense and be conducive to finding other people open shots and swing the ball. You know, was that a bad example of uh, Tyler Perry uh, passing up a good look? In my opinion, yeah. I mean, he did pass up a, an excellent look from a spot where he usually nails it, which I can't say that because he hasn't been nailing, it. but. This game he was, you know, it all kind of runs through him. It's Kaluma, he's hit or miss because he, he has the production, but it's on a, it's not efficient. The same thing with Cam Carter. It's just not efficient. And Matt, are you saying the half-court offense is, is not our strong suit? I don't think so. I honestly think... I, I will say this. I agree. I think if you set in a 24 second offense, I don't think that's using the strengths of this team. Right. I don't. Um, I really think that if you can find an open look in the first 10 to 12 seconds, that means you're going to have to run the ball a little bit. Like, got to move. Right. And this team is not set for that. Despite the fact that I feel like there's some strengths there in having guys get into some open space and running quick, like running a little bit of a quicker offense because we have some athleticism on the court. Look, I'm not a basketball coach. I'm obviously, but I, I do think there are some opportunities where this team, they are not selfish enough. They are right. not selfish enough. And when you aren't selfish enough, and you want to try and pass the ball off to somebody else because you think as a team player, I'm trying to get guys opportunities when you have the opportunity right in front of you. Is it because we don't have a true ace and we don't have that that killer one? Like, like Keontae, he was a killer one. Like, he wanted the ball. He wanted to score it. Uh, Marquise Noel in times, you know, just give him the ball even though he was the point guard, so it made it easier. But can we expect that from Tyler? Because they're not the same player. Uh, production is nice from Tyler, but he's an off-the-ball one in reality. He needs off-the-ball, and we don't have another point guard that can run the offense well enough in sets to get him the ball to score in open looks. It's, it's a balancing thing because – but the thing is, we're a good running team, but you put us on a track with TCU, we're going to get burned, man, because that's what TCU does. They don't have – I think we're more balanced than uh, we probably give ourselves credit for because in the set – in the in the half court, we're scoring the ball efficiently if, if we're not taking those mid-range jumpers. Three and inside, Will McNair's been a surprise. David Gasson on the offensive glass. We're a good offensive rebounding team. So I think not necessarily half. I think we should run and we should shoot earlier in the clock, but our defense is improving. But it, it all balances itself out because if we start shooting early, our defense could, you know, 
feel the brunt of it later down because we're trying to, you know, we're guarding more possessions. It's a balancing act, Matt. No, I, I mean, I agree with you. Um, I, I think the biggest struggle with it is that you don't have a number one guy and you don't have a guy who's going to, you know, if you're down two points, you know, three points with five seconds to go, you've got three guys. You got Tyler Perry, you got Cam, you got Arthur Kaluma, but you don't have somebody who's going to be the, the murderer's row of... You don't have a guy who's going to be like, okay, I'm taking this shot. Like, what? who are we going to put this shot for? Um, that's that's just how it looks right now. So the scary part is, do I think the UCF game was kind of this anomaly from a shooting perspective? Almost a little bit because the season's proven that although Tyler had a great game and I would love to see that continue and we've had some good shooting from this team in that game, we have not consistently had great shooting. And so we're going to have to win the game playing defense. And we're going to have to win the game with, from a rebounding perspective, if we're going to be beating some, some of these top end teams in the big 12. Um, at this point, I know I've been the biggest like hopium guy with this team all throughout the fall. Like I've come up with excuses. That's I've a, good said term. a lot of things. I've said a lot of things about this team because I always felt this team could be a top three team in the big 12 could be a top five team in the big 12. Um, you know, not having a true point guard right now hurts this team. Glover not being able to be in the lineup, I think was a, is whether we never saw anything about him, but having a guy who could play the point and play it with a level of, Hey, he's done it before versus day day. Who's, this is first, you know, he's a true freshman, like trying to run the offense. I think there's a little bit of a difference there. So I look, this team, if they can get to nine wins in Big 12 play, I mean, that means you're winning all your home games. So you're going to have to be KU at home, which obviously we've done in the past. But is this team at a level where they could beat a KU team in Manhattan right now? I don't know. Um, so you're going to have to steal some of these games on the road. So tonight, huge, huge deal. They have to like West Virginia is maybe not a great team, but you're on the road. You got to play at an effort to be able to win games on the road in big 12 play. Yeah, it's, it's essential. I mean, LSU, that was, that was a great road win. Nothing. It's nothing though. I mean, Look, West Virginia, even consistently, they have a great crowd at home. Texas Tech, I mean, look, Texas Tech, that environment on Saturday is going to be a very tough game for us. What, I'm not saying what? we're going to go in and win, but what, like on the road this season, LSU, they're not, I mean, like, LSU isn't good. What is West Virginia then? I'm not saying, but look, I would put West Virginia consistently and historically if you go like on the road at West Virginia that is a yep. game that number one no matter if our team is shitty and theirs is not this team this game is close no matter what like and we have to execute on the road you have Bob, to have guys that are going to be executing on the road Bob Huggins is not rolling 13 deep through that door so it, it maybe well, I don't think that's what I mean he's not rolling 13 beers deep rolling into whatever their arena is called, it's – I don't think this is the team – I think this team equates to basically what LSU is. I think these are – the level of competition that we're seeing at the be beginning of Big 12, I don't think it's doing us any favors of what we're going to see down the road. Uh, Texas Tech, like you said, Salty, West uh, – Cincinnati, I'll be at that game March 2nd. That's going to be a salty team, man. UCF is – they might finish bottom. I think we're facing the two bottom teams in the Big 12 to start off rip. Is it going to be good to get 2-0? and Because I think we're going to win at West Virginia tonight uh, or today. But it's – I'm just trying to find parallels from the out-of-conference that we can put into – 
what we're going to see later down the road. And it might be right, Matt. You're just not going to see anything that we've seen already that we've seen already that can compare. And it it does scare me a little bit because this team is not what we expected coming into the season. We had I had high expectations, just like you. I'm on that uh, that hopium as well. But you know, Naquan's gone. Quez Glover's probably gone. This is what we got, and we're we're rolling, but it's it could be a little touchy, and I I don't want the wheels to fall off if if something you know if something happens. I'll just say this: I think the West. I, I think this game tonight is going to be indicative of how the season is going to go for us, because teams that want to make the NCAA tournament have to go on the road against inferior conference opponents and yep. win games. And if this team does not win this game tonight, is all hope lost? No. No. But this this would be a truly indicative performance of this team is not at the level that we all thought it could be. And maybe that's not fair because – you have you're not you don't have a contributor a contributor you thought you were going to have number one you don't have a guy who transferred in that you thought was going to be probably who knows maybe playing a little bit of a desi sills role off the bench that type of experience so i i don't know if that's fair but this is truly a big game tonight whether west virginia is asked or not does not matter you have to go and you have to perform on the road if you want to make the NCAA tournament. So we'll see. What what is this? What would this victory be? Is this like quad what what is this? Quad two, quad three? West Virginia is currently the last place team in Ken Palm in the Big Twelve. They are they are 134th. So they're they're in dead last in the Big Twelve in Ken Palm. So that's quad three, right? 134th? I think what is it, top fifty on the Top, in the, set top 75 on the, on the net. road. It's based on the net rankings. Oh, okay, right. okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because it's like in the net rankings is also not, you know. <laughs> not great. West Virginia in the net rankings is even lower. They're 175th. So that's like, that's that might be quad four area because I think it's like, it's like a hundred, it's like 150th, like on the road. It's like a quad four three or quad four or something like that i'm pretty sure i don't know though that's i mean i just i'm if we get a dub is it helping our resume any i mean i it that's what we're, that's I mean, what we're it's doing better, it's better than losing <laughs> right but i'm saying like as to a team obviously, obviously you want to win but like going into the season what were we saying uh i remember a, a short of ours like we're adding teams that might not be helping our, you know, our conference in terms of like quad ones. Cause last year was like every game that you played was a quad one, quad one win or quad one loss. It didn't matter. Everything yeah. was going to be quad one. Now West Virginia's hot ass. So if you win or lose, I mean, it's not really helping your resume at all. And we didn't have any of those games last year in big 12 standing because let's be honest, we're not, we're not going to win the conference this year, right? At the same so, time, though, winning winning a quad four game is something you have to do because a quad four loss will hurt you more than right, even a quad quad one or quad two or quad three loss will. I chef, get, chef, we we love you, but what is this? <laughs> I don't know. A quad four know. loss. A quad four loss for a bubble team is literally like that will that will kick you out of the tournament. I under I understand that, but what I'm saying is in relation to what we had last year, where every game was a quad one, West Virginia being a quad four is not helping the conference or helping us in any way. <laughs> no, I don't think any of us are arguing against is it. it. I'm not arguing either. I'm just three. How how are they a quad four when there's 313 teams. I don't know. What what are they? I asked that at the beginning of the damn question. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> I need I need to do some research on the uh, the net quads, but this will be a this will be a cocaine lily after after show Twitter <laughs> quotes. <laughs> Yeah, if you know if you know the definition of a quad one, quad two, quad three, and quad four, and how they differ for home and away, please feel free to tweet at the show, and we will retweet you. So we're playing West Virginia on the road. Their head coach is Josh Eilert. He's a former K State assistant, K State alum. He was a walk on for K State back in the day. He's from what, like Stockton or Osborne, somewhere like North Central Kansas. I don't know, Kansas guy. Knows the program, knows the expectations and stuff of K-State coming in. Not a very good coach this season, but also is walking into the biggest shitstorm you could possibly imagine where a legendary head coach goes on a rant about uh, homophobic rant and then also gets caught drinking and driving with a BAC that's like 5X the legal limit in Pennsylvania. So half of their team leaves the program. One of, one of which is playing at Alabama, one of which is playing at Texas tech now. And we try to recruit both of those guys. Uh, by the way, one of them kind of balled out for Texas tech this past weekend against Texas, but I'm, I think we're better off without them. But that said, I I'm just, how do you feel about the actual matchup against the team West Virginia? Because I don't really, I don't really feel like this is, a game I'm concerned about, but in saying that, I know I'm going to regret saying that because I just jinxed us. You absolutely are jinxing us. Uh, this team's are not, they, this team are is they, garbage. They're five and nine overall. I, I get that, but are they the team that has all their transfers that are eligible? I, I'd imagine that they're all playing, right? They're still eligible. The the Raekwon Battle, the Edwards, all those guys. The who's the other guy that's like battling transfer? eligibility i don't not sure but this, this team has got pieces okay. i mean battle we wanted him bad he's averaging like 23 points a game he can put the ball in the hoop uh edwards is a big bastard we recruited him he recruit he rebounds gasson's gonna have, have that kerr that kerr creasa kid from arizona, arizona that's yeah. he's a fucking weirdo <laughs> yeah mid mid-range master now all he does is fade away from behind the basket for some reason every time i watch him their, their game versus Ohio State was very weird. They battled back in that game. So, And Ohio State's a, a two-loss team going into this. I mean, right now, they're, they're battling. They're just not getting a lot of dubs. And it, that's what concerns me is that, you know, they're not a very good team on paper, but we have to battle them, and they're still kind of fully loaded. So expectations going into this season were pretty high for West Virginia, you know, with all their transfers. And once they – became ineligible, they started losing a lot of games because they had like six guys that could play. So not great, but I think we match up because Cam Carter is one of the best perimeter defense defenders, and uh, we're familiar with battle. We played him at Montana State in the tournament, yep. and, you know, we, we held our own. Did he put uh, up like 25 in that game too? Yeah, but, I mean, when you take a million shots – <laughs> Trust me, I know. I play in a rec league, turn, a rec league, and uh, you know when I get five shots, if I would have shot twenty five, I'd probably score like fifty. The same. Oh my god. Um, a couple concerns I have with West Virginia. I mean, obviously you brought up uh, Rick one battle. I mean, in four games this season, he's averaging almost twenty two points a game. So um, that's still, I you know. That's still a pretty strong guard play, I would say, uh, uh, knowing that they have had one Big 12 game thus far. Um, another player to keep in mind um, is Quinz Zelinski. Very nice. Really that. No, but uh, he's a forward. He averages at 33 minutes a game, 15 points a game. He's been a guy who throughout the season for West Virginia has made some big shots. He's a good – I mean, he's – he is a guy who, like, he does his job game after game. Um, good defender. So somebody definitely to keep in mind. Um, everybody will probably know Jesse Edwards. He was a guy that K-State was recruiting a little bit um, from the center position, averaging 15 points, almost nine rebounds a game, so almost close to a double-double. So it's going to be important for Will McNair, um, David Gasson, you know, to be battling for those rebounds. 
um, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, not give up a ton of offensive rebounds in that um, in that area. But look, I, again, I'm going to say you got to try and figure out a, a way to win a game on the road. Figure it out. <laughs> Kirk Kreese is probably Kirk Kreese is probably you know he plays 34 minutes a game, averages nine points a game. His three point percentage this season is 38. percent Probably going to shoot 55 percent on us. We know, right? No doubt. Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. Now he is because we've we've all yeah. it. it's going to happen. We've all brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> but how do I mean? How do we feel? You know, the game plan that we ha- that we've been having. We don't run the five the five out anymore. Do we have do we have the horses to to just separate from these guys? I think we I think we do. I mean Tyler Perry hopefully keeps this stroke going. Uh Kaluma, I think it's gonna be a nat- a matchup nightmare for these guys. I don't think they have anybody that can that can hang with Kaluma. I think we win by five. Oh you know, my Vegas God. Has, Vegas has this one and a half point favorites in this game. Oh my god. And they That's know, okay. right? Okay. Vegas doesn't lie. I think we win by five. Um, I think this game is going to be close. I mean, I, I just well, do. I, I what do. was what was the line for uh, UCF? Vegas knows guy. Five and a half. Yeah, I think it was like four and a half. Yeah, I think it was coming that's down. Shitty, that's, yeah, they oh. saw us play Chicago. We'll multiply State, it by like, five. You know what? And that's you know what? what? We aren't right? going to put we aren't going to put the uh, the point spread at what thirty five. So we're going to put it at five and a half. I mean, yeah, here's the math. Like, Multiply Ve- it by five. Vegas knew, Vegas knew that we were gonna win at least by five and a half. So, <laughs> and guess what? They were right. You're my guy. I love that. That's the Vegas nose guy. Multiply it by five. Five times five is twenty-five. That's what we won the UCF game by. So it's always a times five. It's, if it's one and a half points for this next game against West Virginia, then I can think you can solidly say it's about five and a half or six, six points. You know, five times one and a half is like eight. Is it? It's actually more than that. <laughs> Let me get my graph. I think five it's times, I think, five I think it's times nine. one and a half. That's seven and five a half. Five times one and a half is seven and a half. Oh, well, right. so not, ma- not a math. Not a math. Seven and a half. Texas not Tech. A- Texas Tech. <laughs> we have to stop. <laughs> not a math pod. <laughs> not a math pod. Moving on to Texas Tech. The Red Raiders are currently 36th in the net, and they are 28th in Ken Palm. They're coming off of a massive victory against the number 25 now Texas Longhorns, who at the time were. Uh, what were they? 20. They were 20th. 20. 20. And they, they go into the Moody Center. They're now the second team to beat Texas at the Moody Center. The first team being. They say. And Pop Isaacs may or may not have sexually assaulted a 17 uh. prior to playing the game and is under a Title IX investigation. And uh, that one hits really close to home because. Uh, yeah, a certain player for K-State was also under a Title IX investigation and seemingly only happened because of a bar fight at Tubby's. But he, now he's playing for Memphis. But we don't have to get into that. Anyway, Texas Tech, we're playing at United Supermarkets Arena on Saturday. I didn't expect Texas Tech to be super, super great this season because it's a first-year head coach in Grant McCaslin. He was obviously very good at North Texas, coaching a guy, Tyler Perry, who we all know now. And, you know, winning the Conference USA, all this other stuff at North Texas. Comes from the Scott Drew tree. So Tang is obviously really familiar with him. But he plays kind of that slower, gum it up, muck it up style of basketball. So I'm really curious to see how K-State plays against a team like Texas Tech. Knowing that, I I mean, have have we played a team similar to this so far this season? Who would you say is the most comparable team to Texas Tech from the non conference my thing is with Texas Tech, like, I don't know if it was because that, that's the first game that I've watched with Texas Tech. Um, I don't know if it was the camera angle at at Texas, but they just look small. They just didn't look like they were a big team at all. Like, Coach Toussaint looks like he's 5'8". Right. I mean, they just they just didn't look like – I mean, they're – what's the Williams kid? And he's like their post player, and he looked like he was like 6'5". I was like, oh, they're a tiny-looking team. But maybe it was just the – camera angle i'd have to look at the yeah, williams five. is six six that that was like their five i don't know 
Joe Tucson is six foot tall. He's a little smaller. There's no way he's six foot tall. Um, <laughs> if I had to put a comparison on him, you know, LSU was a long, a long team. Villanova, they were, they were long. I'm trying to think. Who did we play in the Bahamas? Miami. Providence. What? No, Bryce Hopkins. They don't have a Bryce Hopkins on that team. And they don't Is have it possible sh- that we haven't we haven't played a competitive no, I, team. Yet, I think that's yeah. where I think that's where I'm heading. I don't think we've seen anybody like Texas Tech. That that gum it up style is fun. You know, it's like old Bruce Weber, like old Bruce Weber. <laughs> like, don't give a shit. We're just gonna actually mean maybe Frank Martin esque. Uh they don't do they shoot a lot of threes? I don't I haven't seen them shoot a lot of threes, but you know the that's going to be one of those grinder games. I think UCF was similar. If if UCF would lean into that, like just be those bad boys that we know we suck, but we're going to beat the hell out of you. I think Texas Tech does that, but they have the skill talent to do it. So you also have to take into account that Texas Tech playing at Texas for the last time as members of the same conference. They're playing. They're always motivated. Going to, they're always going to play that game motivated. They're always going to play that game with a little extra gumption than they would. Oh, gumption. That's a good word. Matt, what do you think? Why are you watching uh, Michigan run up the sideline? <laughs> How'd you know? Because I'm watching the same um, thing. <laughs> yeah. So I texted this group after or during the Texas Tech-Texas game, and I said, Texas Tech is on a similar path to K-State from last season. Mm, you yes, did. I, I do believe that Texas Tech has the capability to pull that type of season performance this season. Here's oh, why. Wow. You have a guy at point guard who, despite everything that's being talked about him, obviously off the court, very talented player. He's <laughs> a guy who has experience in the Big 12. But you also have a guy next to him that you're pairing at the guard position who – has experience, major conference experience, showing a lot of grit. <clears throat> this Texas K-State Tech killer team too. Also, K State killer. Yes. This Texas Tech team also lost on the road at Butler this season. Who'd have thought? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, no, no. But parallels again. I yeah. There's They're so everywhere. Well, no, I. <laughs> but I, I, I think having that experience card play like. Nothing can oversell, like, having guards who have major conference experience in the Big 12, so to speak. Um, I just – there's something about when I was watching Texas Tech play that made me really believe this, that they will have the capability to be in most of the games they play this season because of the fact that they have a team that I feel – is together. They just mm. look and play. They Grant McCaslin has built a really good culture in a short amount of time at Texas Tech. I can tell. I mean, I truly can. Um, and you know, watching the Tech game, like I or watching this Texas game, I saw that. Yeah, that's why I think. I mean, I really think Texas Tech is going to surprise a lot of people in big in the Big Twelve this year. Are because- they? The greatest together team. Oh, in the Big Twelve, are they the Maybe. greatest together team in the history shout, of Texas Tech athletics? Shout out to my boy Matt Campbell. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> no, but they play, they play together. They play yeah. together. He's built a really good culture there. Oh, I just that's I like I'm watching it, and everybody's in the right spot. I mean, I'm I'm serious. Like on the offensive side, Pop Isaacs is running the offense. Everybody's in the right spot. Defensively, everybody just seemed to be in the right spot. I mean, Matt, it, what you what you said about like the together, like not together. I got the together point in my head, laughing at you. The freaking experienced guards, two experienced guards. That's what Tang wanted, mm-hmm. and I thought it was hilarious because you brought that point up. After the post game, they were they were asking uh, Tyler Perry, Arthur Kaluma, like, what what can you gain from this, and are you prepared for 
the Big 12 and what did you how it compared to what you ex- expected? And they were like, I didn't have any. I don't know anything about the Big 12. I've never played in it before. I just thought that was hilarious. And those are the guards that we're bringing in. And they're bringing in Pop Isaac and, and Troussant, who have been in the Big 12 for seemingly forever, except for, you know, Pop Isaac was a freshman last year. But Troussant's been here for a long time. Actually, I think, I think we're losing in law. I, I think God we're losing damn it, law. Matt. You're always doing that. I do. I just do. I mean... What well, about the Hopi really environment? <laughs> Yo, we lost in didn't we? No, we won. We lost in Lubbock last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. did. And we played yeah. them. They oh, played us oh, super, super close oh. last year too at home. Yeah, but they don't have a seven foot five uh, Armenian guy up there, or whatever he is, Turkish oh, or something. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's that was our kryptonite last that year. That's true. Seven foot five Armenian guys. <laughs> They don't have that. They don't have that guy anymore. No, no Vladimir. They don't. I think he's playing at like Utah Valley or something like that. No, he's a Cal. He's a Cal. That's right. Far, far, he had uh, transferred far in plus. from like Amen. Utah Valley or something. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. That's what yeah. I got it. I don't even remember what was his name. It's know. like Faruqi. Fardos. Fardos Amac. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. What it is. Yeah. Amac. Uh, Texas. Yo, I know Texas, ball. Texas Tech has a couple of other common opponents they've played this season. They they beat Oral Roberts 82 to 76. So Ooh. they did they didn't play him in overtime, but it was a close game for whatever that's worth. Take that as you will. And they got absolutely gobsmacked by Villanova, 85 to 69. But that was on a neutral site. That was in the battle for Atlantis. Ooh. I, what do you got to say about common opponents, Matt? I think I think that's in our favor. <laughs> Yeah, for I doing mean, uh, the, Vill- the Villanova game for us, they didn't have Justin Moore, their best player, because he got hurt in the first half of that game, and we still had to go to overtime with them. So I don't know what I was proving. Like you're just trying to make a point. I mean, no, I, I think a lot of the man, the out of conference for us. I know you guys talked about this earlier while I was, you know, diddle fart with my mic. Um, <laughs> Chicago State, the disrespect for Chicago State. They're literally playing an NBA schedule. Come on now. Those kids were not There's ready. There's 303 in Ken Palm. There's nothing to respect. Dude, they're they're a lot better than that, in my opinion. They have a good player. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we had good players on the court, but they did they regressed to the mean in that game. Oh, how about still- North Alabama? Didn't they only North have Alabama to play three back. games in February because they're not even in a conference. Yeah, because they, they played an NBA schedule. They played like 25 games in a month and a half. I can't Chicago remember. State will be uh they'll be in a conference next season and we'll be able to see their true their true yeah, self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Half their team is from Florida. That North Alabama game, ugly one as well. They didn't have their best player either. So I don't I don't know what, what you could take from any of this stuff. It's, I'm excited. I think we're going to go 3-0 and in conference. I don't think we're going to go 3-0 and in conference. I think we are going to be talking next week about a 2-1 and K-State team. I don't know if that second victory comes against West Virginia or comes against Tech, but... I'm hypothetically, hoping- though, yeah. hypothetically 3-0, where, where's, your, where's your meter at, Matt? Hi, pathetic. <laughs> What? Hi, pathetic, like you right now. <laughs> I'm not pathetic. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Like, yeah, if we go three and zero, that's awesome. I don't. He's asking, what? What is your season outlook if K State finishes this, these next two games with three and zero record? Yeah, way more eloquently put. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh my God, Matt! We gotta get Matt, we gotta get Matt out What's of here, the- dude. He's fucking. What's you need a nap. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I do need a nap. If it's like 11. <laughs> no, like our schedule. I mean, we play Baylor. We play Baylor at home on the 16th. So wait, that's like a week from now. Yeah, we will talk about that game I, next. Look, we if we we have to win games at home. Oh, nine and nine. Jerome Tang, Jerome Tang is saying nine and nine. Look, That's a turn. If we go three zero in this, if we go three and zero in this, that means yeah, we're trending towards making the NCAA tournament. 
There you go. Oh my God! Just trending? I I can't with this guy. You're trending. you're joking. Trending. Then we'll be fourteen well, and three. I wonder. Trending. I wonder how our NCAA tournament resume is going to be affected by a quad four win on the road. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, I, I think we have to go three and zero. Oh. These teams that we're playing, like I brought up earlier, the teams that we're playing are not preparing us very well for uh, the stretch. Like what? Who did we just play? Uh, I feel like Texas Tech is a perfect litmus test going into a heavier conference game schedule. Texas Tech is a good mm-hmm. litmus test. Yes. Tomorrow, that is why West Virginia is so important. Are they? Are, so Wait, you're saying you know Texas? We got, we got three and zero. We got three and zero. I'll Venmo you and buy you a beer. Oh my God, I love that. You, you're Venmoing see, him and buying him a beer. That's a double whammy. No, no, I'll Venmo him and buy him a beer. I'll bet however much a beer is. But if we lose, you have to send me ten forever stamps. Oh god, that's like forty bucks. <laughs> no chance. You get them at a discount. Oh my god. They don't. <laughs> I'll steal them. <laughs> what are they? Forty-four cents a stamp now. Just kidding. Real yeah, quick. So I feel like we're good on men's hoops. I want to talk quickly about women's hoops because they Ooh. deserve their due. They deserve their they due. Do. They are currently 3-0 and to start conference play. They only have one loss still. It's to Iowa. They're 11th in the country right now, 12th in the country right 12. now. 12th. They dropped the spot. Which, how how does that happen? I don't I don't understand how that happens, but they've got, they've got a couple good games, very interesting games coming up. Um, they're coming off of these three games. They, they beat Cincinnati 66-41. to 41. They beat the absolute daylights out of Houston 72-38. to 38. And then they beat UCF on the road, 72-56. Their next two games are against Oklahoma team, who was ranked earlier this season, who's now fallen out of the rankings. Uh, they went on like a three-game skid, and they lost to the North Carolina team that, that we had beaten earlier this season. And then the next game is versus number 10 Texas. Both of those are at Bramlage. Go to the game if you're in Manhattan, if you're able to make it. I would go to both games if I, if I had the opportunity to. Uh, but how are you feeling about the women's team Going in, you know, three games strong, three and zero after three in the conference, with two massive matchups coming up. Texas also just lost their best player. Oh God! So we don't we don't cheer for we don't cheer for people getting injured. But no, I'm not. I'm just <laughs> pointing it out. <laughs> Texas yeah, no, down their best player. Pleasantly, pleasantly surprised, and I and I this team. You could have sold me on this team being 11th at the beginning of the season, but I would have, you know, maybe not actually at this point being 11th. I thought it would take a little bit longer where we were getting some more solid wins, but this team is strong. Ioka Lee, and she's not even have to play the whole game. She's well-rested going into uh, a lot of these second halves, not even have to play. Uh, Gabby Gregory, she's turned it on because she was a little bit hit or miss at the beginning of the season. But she's she's really finding her role, and, you know, Sundell is God, point God. She is a point God, so goddess. I don't know how you want to put it. Uh, it's an elite team. It's balanced. We shoot the Glenn twins. I mean, it, we're deep, too. I mean, we don't even – haven't even put our young guns in there. So – the future's still bright for Mitty. Let's go. And people were shitting on my boy. And Yoki's Yoki's averaging twenty and eight, basically, which is nasty. Dog. Yeah. Look, this team. If 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 you're listening and you haven't been able to watch a lot of K State women's basketball, I would start because I truly believe that this team has all the moving pieces to make it to the Final Four this season. Um, they have, they have an elite defense. I mean, this defense is so good. Um, and we're really going to see, especially against OU this week and then Texas, when you're playing against some higher competition, I mean, K-State has been playing newcomers in the big 12, the past three games. Um, I think it's a hard litmus test for this team, but truthfully, OU has been 
a good team um, here recently um, in Big 12, and they're a good team this season. Uh, but then Texas at home, as Bob said, Rory Harmon from Texas is out for the season. She got hurt. Is Texas' best player. Um, so uh, despite that, like this is a huge game for Jeff Minnie and his team, like a huge week because if you can come out of this 2-0, and you will be like – we're seeing disrespect about the rankings and all this type of stuff, which I understand, but like this team will legitimately be a top 10 team. If they win the next two games, I think they can, I think they can win the big 12. I think they can win. they will be a top two seed in the NCAA tournament because they, this team is together. This is a together team. The ca- together. This might actually be the greatest together team in case. <laughs> this is, I mean, I'm serious. Like they, they have they have a great starting five, but they have girls off the bench that just really fit. They fit in. I mean, when Ayoka Lee is out, Amani Lester comes in, um, and you know, I mean, she's not Ayoka Lee, but she's still able to play good defense and um, get some opportunities inside. Um, both the Glenn sisters have been excellent. Taryn Sides, what's, who's a, a huge freshman, is, is what's awesome. The, so, what's the foreign girl from like Spain? Um, Sanchez, yes, yes. another great player. I mean, she's got, she's got a great shot on her, yes. So, I mean, I'm serious. I like, I live in Texas. I wish I could see K State women's basketball. I wish I had the opportunity. Um, if you're in Manhattan, if you're a student that's listening to this, go to those games. I mean, having a Bramwich Coliseum that potentially would, would have a really good atmosphere can only help. Um, they deserve support, I would say. I mean, it's hard. Um, I, I see the back and forth, especially online, of people like, I can't drive two hours to go see a women's basketball game. I, you know, I understand like some of those. But if you're close and you have the opportunity to go, I think the, the women would definitely love the support for the next uh, games and throughout the rest of the season. So the last time that Aoka Lee played Oklahoma in Bramwich Coliseum, she put up 61 points and set the NCAA record for points in a game. Let's How many go. points does Aoka Lee put up against Oklahoma? 33. Hmm. I'm going to say like 25 because, um, I, I mean, I because she hasn't had – like that was a team where they needed the scoring. <laughs> and this is a team, I mean, quite frankly, they have – they have a lot of players that can score. Um, you know, they don't bring, they don't bam it inside as much as they did two years ago. Um, yeah. They're an outside shooting team. Jalen Glenn's a great shooter on the outside. Um, Sundell's a good shooter. Terrence Sides is a good shooter. I so I, I'm going to say like 25 and 10. I mean, which is still a great game. I got I got it. Thir- I got Ioka Lee 33 and seven and uh, Sundell. Triple double. All right, all right. I would. I I love triple doubles. As a Nikola Jokic fan, I love triple doubles. So I'll, I'll take that all day, oh every my day. God, Get for here. all of us here at Cocaine Willie, thank you for listening to the show on your podcast feeds or watching us on YouTube. Do us a favor if you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcasts, leave us a five star rating and follow the show. And if you're watching on YouTube, give us a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, even if you're not a K State fan. You can follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, or follow us individually. I am at Bob Trollsby. Fireball Matt is at Matt Marchesini, and Chef is at Chef Andre Napier. Chef. Cocaine's a hell of a drug, baby. You are all coke and no joke. Wildcat country. That's fucking Get go. Get go, Matt.